If any of you know me, you know that I'm not much of a multiplayer gamer. And it's not because I haven't got a lot of friends to play with. <laughs> Did you guys see that? <laughs> It's not just about graphics and microtransactions for cosmetics. Oh no! No, 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 no. An amazing game for me is the way the game tells the story. With deep character building that becomes so memorable that you could just keep playing that single player game over and over again. Are you crying? <laughs> no! No, I'm not! I'm, so, I'm not! Oh my god, you're crying. Yes! <laughs> Hold me! Come here. So if you're someone who absolutely loves single player games, then you need to make sure you play these 22 PlayStation games with the most epic storylines. And stick around to the end of the video so you can see my top five and also why I didn't mention a few games that you might be like, but why didn't you mention those? In number 22, we have a game that surprised me for all the right reasons. What Remains of Edith Finch is a first person tragic story. You play as Edith Finch and you visit the house your family members lived in, including yourself, and you find out what happened to each of them with their unique storytelling. You must explore and find your way through the house with hidden doors, gaps, and peepholes, which makes you feel so excited to find out what happened to each of your family members. You will find diaries from each of your family members and it will put you into their feet and tell you how they died. I woke up and I was starving so I looked around for something to eat. And it is so freaking emotional because some of them are kids. You really need to focus on listening to what happened because once you understand what happened, you're like, this is freaking sad. There is so much unique gameplay in each of the family members' death. What I love about the house is that there is so much detail in this house. It's rich, full of life. As you move around, words and sentences will appear to help you learn about every secret of the house. So it feels like a house that is properly lived in. Kudos to the developers. It's a very short game, two to four hours. It's nice from time to time to take a break from all those long ass games that you're playing. And with that free PS5 upgrade, you can play this in a smooth 60 FPS. In number 21, we have a game that was a launch title for the PS4 and it was my first game I played on my PS4. I freaking love Killzone Shadowfall. If you haven't played this game, it is free on the PS subscription service and I think it's a game you must play. It has an epic storyline that has a lot of freaking twists. You play as Shadow Marshal Lucas Kellen and you're are trying to keep the peace on both sides of this gigantic wall that divides your home and your people. The conflict erupts between humans and the Hellgast cousins and you have to dive into this action-packed story of, and defend your people and you start to realize that you may have been lied to by your people. That's all I'm going to say about the story. The action is so freaking great. It is a lot of flipping fun and I just wish Guerrilla Games would not just shut away Killzone but I guess they're focusing on Horizon. In number 20 we have a game that the last video of mine uh, you guys said that this is not a flop you shouldn't have put it on this list and that's Guardians of the Galaxy. Now I said it was a flop because of the amount of sales it made and it didn't really hit target but maybe I was wrong. The player is the one and only Star Lord and it is the early years of the Guardians of the Galaxy basically before anyone knew of them really. It takes place 12 years after a massive war that affected nearly every civilization across the galaxy. Peter basically wants to make some money on the side and also try and build his reputation as the Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, no one knows them. that. The characters are very unique. They're funny. They keep close to the original characters in the movies, but they make it their own. Who gives a fart? Tell them to get their golden butts up here. Now I stopped playing the game only because the cutscenes were very very long, I just got a little bit bored and for me the combat wasn't as exciting. I don't think I gave this game enough of a chance. In terms of a story game, single player, no microtransactions, <laughs> you're gonna love it. Now in number 19 we have a game called Stray. I know what you're thinking, I'm not playing a game about a cat. There is a deeper storyline than just playing as a cat. First of all you lose your family and friends in an epic opening scene and you know sometimes you might think it might get a little bit sad and you know there's a fly in my eye. Ah, just give this game a go. <laughs> I'm more of a dog person. <laughs> No, 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 your girlfriend is watching. Don't. <laughs> oh, did you just say what happened? <laughs> 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 
After you lose your family, you are trapped in this enclosed dome that has been closed from the outside for so many years. Humans used to live among these robots, but now they are extinct, probably because of a radiation or a nuclear attack. It is dominated by robots that were created by the humans to complete tasks and certain jobs. There was a plague that erupted and killed off all the humans, and the robots are the only ones remaining. They talk about humans and what they used to do by their unique conversations with robots you meet. Roaming around is so much fun in this cyberpunk world with your trusty B12, who is your a trusty little sidekick who can help you fight off a few little enemies and you can scan and communicate with these robots. You must find out why this city has been enclosed for so many years and can you find out what happened and potentially free this city. It's not a long game for around five to eight hours it's just something different. It felt like it was a little bit too short. Hopefully there may be a sequel. Now in number 18 we have a game Detroit Become Human and there is no upgrade for the PS5 but this game is similar to Heavy Rain. It's actually the same creator and if you like that game this is very very similar. Detroit Become Human is around 10 hours long. These games are essentially not really games, there are more interactive stories which some people may not like. The game takes place in the future of Detroit in 2038 and society is filled with androids who are basically slaves to humans. They are used to carry out tasks and they slowly take over jobs that humans once could. Some androids become deviant which they develop free will and they start a revolution against the humans. They are dialogue options and you get multiple endings in this game and a lot of things will change throughout the game based off your choices that you will choose. You will play between three androids which are very very different. The action leads to multiple paths with multiple endings so it does keep you engaged and actually want you to go back to the game because you want to try out a few different endings. In number 17 we have Days Gone. A lot of people I've spoken to they love this game but it's a shame Sony are not planning to do a sequel. It's a post-apocalyptic world which you know I love post-apocalyptic worlds I can't get enough of that. The game is pretty long for around 35 hours. <laughs> that is way too long. Yeah I know I'm not playing that game. Playing Hogwarts Legacy is probably even longer. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> It takes place two years after a pandemic that turned humans into zombies. Standard. Deacon hears that his wife may be dead or missing after she is bitten by a zombie. She's taken away by a helicopter and then the story essentially starts. Well, two years later. You embark on a journey with your buddy who are known as drifters or mercenaries who complete certain tasks for credits. Deacon did make it into the place his wife is taken but is overrun by zombies and she is assumed dead. Deacon sees a Nero chopper which he thought all of them had died. Anyways, I'm not going to spoil the story or anything like that you're just gonna have to play it he tries to find out answers of what happened and yeah it's a long game some of the missions can be quite repetitive by taking care of hordes of zombies which looks like an absolute joke <laughs> For a small studio this is quite an amazing game it did come out buggy but i believe it's all patched and fixed now and you get to feel like a biker in number 16 i don't really follow the star wars universe i've only seen the very first film and you know, i said i was going to watch the rest but i can't be bothered don't let that put you off playing star wars jedi falling i was addicted to this game from start to finish playing as cow a jedi is a target for the galactic empire who are trying to eradicate all of the jedis and you are trying to rebuild the jedi at the same time it's a shame the galactic empire can't get rid of these sjw's i just want to you know, cancel everyone <coughs> oh fuck how did you get in here again? I'm not going to say anything Wait, because right anything there. I say, I, I, I get, I get cancelled. No. Excuse, excuse me. Excuse me. You must embark on a journey to find the remaining Jedi whilst dealing with your troubled past and mastering your skills. Learn how to dual wield and fight some epic enemies. <laughs> If you haven't played it, I believe it is free in the subscription service and you have to because Jedi Survivor is round the corner. And man, I cannot wait for that game. All of the games. Every game. In number 15, we have Resident Evil Village and it continues the story of Ethan Winters. The story is quite easy to understand, but in terms of the virus and the science behind it, that can be a little bit confusing. You think all of your troubles have gone from Resident Evil 7 and all of a sudden someone blasts down the door and all of a sudden shit goes wrong again. <laughs> You're taken away along with your child, but then you find yourself out of a car crash just outside a village, which if you saw in real life, you would be like, nah, 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 nah forget it. Take, take care of, take my kid. Uh, no, I ain't coming. I get a new kid. Damn! Your job is to find your missing daughter and uncover what the hell is going on. You do meet some very hot vampire ladies and damn. <laughs> uh, um, excuse me? Well, you know, hey, they're only pixels. It was a game. <laughs> 
sexy pixels. I replayed this game about four to five times. It was that good. But if you're playing this for the first time, good luck trying to sleep at night. Now in number 14, Metro Exodus was such a surprise for me. I didn't think I would be that intrigued with the story or the characters, but I was very, very wrong. And damn, by the end of the game, <laughs> what's wrong with me? <laughs> oh my God, for God's sake. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. Wow. You play as Artyom in this first person survival game and it is based in the future of a post-apocalyptic Russia and you've been living underground for all of your 24 years of life after a nuclear war killed billions of people. Certain monsters are based in your home which is deep underground so you're forced to enter the real world from underneath and seek help in the capital. Your wife and your father-in-law accompany you and throughout the game you really see the development in all of these characters. This is a true survival game so bullets are very short so damn make sure you're careful with how much bullets you're using. You have to try and sneak up on enemies use your knife and other weapons if you can and with the announcement of a sequel coming eventually very intrigued with this game in number 13 we have assassin's creed origins which i really loved and i still haven't completed it my god what's ubisoft trying to do to me the start of the game was amazing. You play as Bayek of Siwa, and after living through the death of your son, you are on a journey of revenge along with your wife to put this to bed. Whilst exploring this incredible scenes of Egypt, which is truly mind blowing. I thought Odyssey was amazing. That is amazing in terms of its scenery, but the storyline I find is a lot better. You do have the modern day storyline as well as Layla entering the Animus, but to be honest, I'm much more intrigued with the ancient story than the modern one because I've skipped a few Assassin's Creed games myself. I don't really care about the modern and Assassin's Creed. I just want to play a good Assassin's Creed game. The only thing I didn't like about this Assassin's Creed was the combat. It felt a bit weird. It felt like I had to lock onto targets instead of having a bit more free roam. In number 12, we have Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And I know I rip Ubisoft for, you know, <laughs> pissing off their customers, releasing games buggy, loads of cosmetic and monetization, and canceling a load of games. What are they good for? The only thing I will say about this game, the pacing was so off. Just as I got into it, you had to travel to another side of England and start a completely different side story for an additional five to eight hours. You play as Eivor, male or female, and I have to say, I played as male Eivor, and I absolutely loved male Eivor. You're telling me you didn't pick a female? You sexist. Are you freaking serious? Or maybe it's because when I play games, I like to make out I'm the character, so there's no yeah, point no, in playing as a no. female. Like, didn't you think of that? Don't say it. If you do, you know what's oh, going to come. Gonna... Guys, are we all good over here? Huh? No, 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 we're fine. We're, we're fine. <laughs> we're good for now. <laughs> I'm going to make myself a coffee. No problem. You have Odin in your head for the majority of the game and as you progress you start to put the pieces together of what is going on. The story is kind of epic and what's amazing is that it is linked to Asgard and you get to visit Asgard and there's a completely different storyline. And then you realise it's all connected somehow. Now even though I put on over 100 hours and I wanted to do every side quest, you do, I guess you don't have to because the story is great when you get to the end and I was like wow that was a really good game. Probably 30 hours was pointless but still. In number 11 we have a new game that I haven't started playing yet but I've just bought it. Currently playing Hogwarts so it's going to take a back burner but I do want to do a review for Atomic Heart and it might even be higher on this list but because I haven't played it I've stuck it at number 11. It takes place in an alternate history where the Soviet Union wins World War II and becomes a utopian superpower leading innovation in all fields of science but most importantly robotics. In present day 1955 the USSR attempts to launch a new device which will allow humans to control robots with their mind but the plan is sabotage causing all robots to turn on humans. Major, there will soon be so many enemies here that your demise is inevitable. Oh, yeah. This sounds very freaking interesting and you have to investigate what the hell is going on. There are some massive twists in the game. I don't really know too much. It's a great storyline. And the developers have said that you should play this game in Russian because that is the original language. How can you support this game? There is a war going on. This is Oh, for God's sake, you, you, that's it. Where's my wand? Oh, don't talk to me like that. He needs some milk. Justice. 
So I'm going to try this game out and make sure you don't feel guilty for playing this game. Now in number 10, if you're 31 years old like me, you will remember Uncharted. This is one of the best franchises growing up when I had my PS3 when I was like 14 years old. Oh my God, is it that long? I recommend you do play all of the Uncharted games before you play Uncharted 4 because there will be so many memorable characters. There's going to be so many memories and you're just not going to have that relationship with these characters otherwise. If you are subscribed to PS Plus, the game is actually coming to the service very soon with the Legacy of Thieves edition. His lost brother shows up out of nowhere and he embarks on one last journey to find Captain Henry Avery's treasure. As well as insane gameplay, characters and comedy, I love when you are in his attic and you get to see all of the memories from all of the past games and wow is it nostalgic. And you get to have a little fight as well, a little toy pistol. <laughs> Here they come, take cover, surround it. In number nine, we have a game that I truly fell in love with. Death Stranded. It made me feel emotions I didn't think I would feel in a video game and it's all about death and it makes you feel a bit more calmer about it. It's a very weird game. Some will like if you can give it a bit of time. It does take a long time for the story to get moving as at some point you may just feel like you are delivering cargo back and forth. I think it's done deliberately so you can feel how empty the world is and how important Sam is to delivering cargo to these different cities which they need to rebuild America. You play as Sam Porter Bridges who is quite a simple character with little emotion. Ocean. The Death Stranding began with the beach and the world between the afterlife and the world of the living become entangled. There are beach things which are quite scary as they are invisible and they will kill the living if you are not careful. You have to be very silent when transversing this world, climbing, riding and trying to get through these beach things. It's a complicated story, so I had to do a lot of research because from the get-go, what the hell were they talking about? What's all these words? One has been physically removed from its Ooh. new mother. <laughs> a process that renders What the hell are they talking about? And prone. Eh? Scientists have discovered there has been many death strandings, but this one may lead to the entire destruction of civilization for good. So it's up to you to connect different people and cities to the chiral network and get to the bottom of this. Once you get past that 10 hours of gameplay, it does get a lot more exciting. You get weapons, you get guns, you will learn how to transverse the world a little bit quicker. But it's a game that is just unique in its storytelling. And with the announcement of Death Stranding 2, man, I cannot wait to see what they bring. So we're number eight. We have a game that I'm currently playing and the the reason why it's number eight on this list is because I'm still playing the game and I don't want to let my hype levels get too much and over the top and then I'm like, yeah, it's number one. <laughs> Expecto Patrona. Even though I love the freaking game and it's probably going to get game of the year. You're a fifth year and you have a connection to ancient magic and someone is trying to wield this ancient magic and you have to stop them. There is a conflict between goblins and humans but the rebellion leader Ranrock is obsessed with finding this ancient power and wielding it. But even if you do not like Harry Potter, you will love this game. A lot of people have commented on my video and my review and were like, I've never played Harry Potter but I am loving this game. It is a great open world game. So if you want to check out my review, you can and you can see this SJW trying to cancel me. <laughs> Wait till I go on Twitter. I knew that was you. Did you cuss my hairline? No, that wasn't me. Never mind. Now in number seven, we have a game that makes me want to put on a Spider-Man mask and outfit and just roam the streets. <laughs> now, if you do not like Spider-Man, I'm sure there is something very wrong with you. <laughs> Anthony, are you serious? What is wrong with you? It's your friendly neighborhood yeah. YouTuber, Neutro. <laughs> I'm gonna make myself coffee and get on with my day. Spider-Man Remastered is a game with a gripping storyline to go with this insane gameplay from Insomniac Studios. It takes place after Wilson Fisk is captured by Spider-Man, but afterwards a cult called the Inner Demons take over Fisk's illegal assets. MJ and Spider-Man team up to investigate and as a result they end up looking for an object called Devil's Breath. You are not exactly sure what this is, but damn you know it's gonna affect the whole city. The main story is over 20 hours long and not to mention the amazing side content in this game which is gripping, exciting, there are a lot of villains in this game which is incredible and this is what you want from a Spider-Man game. You can say Miles Morales is included in this and I really enjoyed Miles Morales. It just wasn't long enough and with Spider-Man 2 coming this year, oh my gosh, we have to play these two games with your web slinging. <laughs> Ow! What the hell was that? Who did that? In number six, we have Horizon Zero Dawn and Forbidden West. And even though I didn't like these games as much as I thought I would, there's no denying that these storylines are one of the 
best in PlayStation's history. Playing as Aloy, a young girl who's an outcast growing up, she struggles to be accepted into her village as she didn't have a mother and the world is ran by machines. At a young age, she comes across the ancient device called a Focus and it basically starts educating her on the current world and the history of this post-apocalyptic world. Her father figure, Rost, trains her and gets her ready for the Proving, which is a trial which will allow her to become a member of the Nora, which is a tribe. Something goes wrong and after she wins the Proving, the matriarchs finally tell her that she was born beyond a sealed door and that is why she's an outcast because she has no mother she was born within this thingamajig. Forbidden West is a much more polished game with amazing gameplay. I just feel like the story, I wasn't as invested in it as I was with the first one. And if you love story driven games, this is going to keep you occupied for hours. Anyways, I just want to say a massive thank you to all you guys who are supporting the channel. And also I want to shout out the new members of the team. Shout out to Yono, Seneda, Marcelo and George. A massive thank you to all you guys. It means a hell of a lot. And you are helping this dream come true of making this my full time job. I'm over at Buy Me A Coffee where you can help support the channel or you can hit a super thanks in YouTube but nevertheless no matter what you're doing even if you just like the video that is enough for me so thank you all. Now at number five we have a game that is very similar to The Last of Us and I really freaking love this storyline. A Plague Tale Innocence and a Plague Tale Requiem. What an underrated game. More people should be playing this game. Set in the 15th century you play as a missia who you and your brother Hugo are on the run from the French Inquisition. Hordes of rats are taking over everywhere which is spreading the Black Plague and your job is to run and survive and find out how to cure Hugo of this mysterious sickness he has, which ends up being a special power and a curse. It is an incredible emotional game with extreme emphasis on the relationship between these two siblings who find themselves constantly around death. They are searching for answers and for safety, but the development of these two characters is just amazing. Requiem was an incredible game and even at 30 FPS frame rate, I loved the game so much. And I probably had a few more tears as well because I get attached to these characters. They develop them so well. I, you know, I just feel an emotional, it's like films. People cry at films, what's the difference? Why am I getting defensive? You meet some incredible new allies in the sequel along with some existing from the previous game and the acting is beautiful. The scenery, the graphics, it is so rich with life and it's a, it's a high down my hey hi. Now in number four, we have a game that was flipping amazing. One of the best, if not the best samurai game I've played and it made me want to become a samurai. <laughs> You play as the one and only Jin Sakai, a samurai warrior who is trying to defend his land of Tsushima from the Mongols. After losing the early battle from the cheating enemy Koten Khan, you manage to survive and you have to learn to fight dirty if you want to save your uncle and your land. You make some incredible allies in the game and all of the characters you meet in this game are memorable. They have their own story, it's full of emotion, the acting is beautiful and I couldn't stop playing this game. I played over 100 hours of this game, completed it three times, made me buy this flip hat. Jin is an amazing character who's experienced a lot of loss and he is up there with one of my favorite PlayStation characters. The gameplay, the stances, the weapons you have, the open world, the wind and your trusty horse makes this a masterpiece you must play. It is on the PS Plus service so if you're not playing this, play it! To the top three, this was very hard. I would like to say that they're in no particular order, but anyway, let's just get on with it. When I say I love The Witcher 3, oh my gosh, this is probably one of the best games I've played. This made me feel like, and I keep saying that about every game, but The Witcher 3 hits on a different level. Now I will definitely be getting back to this game. I loved everything about it, especially the music. Damn it. So you're looking for Siri, your surrogate daughter who you've brought up and she is a very special girl. She has a deep unique power that she doesn't know how to control but the wild hunt are after her. She is missing and you are working with many amazing characters along with your love interest Yennefer who is determined to help her. I'm not going to say much about this game because if you want to see my full review of the game, spoiler free, then click the link. Man, I cannot wait to get back to this game. Now in number two, we have a game that was probably the most anticipated game of the year with God of War Ragnarok. Alongside Babylon's Fall. <laughs>
Okay, I'm getting it. God of War 2018 and God of War Ragnarok are one of the best games ever in PlayStation's history because it joins Norse and Greek mythology, which is two of my favorites. I'm not going to explain the story for you. I've got a review up there, but it's a very linear game. And that's what I've heard from most people that don't like linear games. They're like, this is too linear. It's a single player story driven game. That is what it's made for. If you do like those sort of games, this is better than movies, straight up. Embarking on a father son journey with Atreus is so so warming. You see how Atreus was in 2018's game and you see Kratos struggle as a father and you see that progression in their characters. Again, check out my review and damn Kratos' voice. I will show him. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm so sorry, Mr. Kratos. Do not be sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. Better. Yeah. Be better. Be better. Be better. <laughs> Bitch. Now, number one, we have The Last of Us Part 1. And I've played this game probably for over 200 hours since the PS3 version. So I played on PS3, PS4, and PS5. Can't wait for them to remake it again <laughs> for the PS6 and 7. But The Last of Us Part 1 is the best way to play this insane game. I was so young playing this game at the time and it's always been one of my favorite games because of that epic storyline with Joel and Ellie. I just think Naughty Dog absolutely killed it with the development of these two characters. Joel experiencing loss with his daughter and then 20 years later, him trying to help this girl actually she's immune from the deadly virus. He really doesn't know what he's doing and what he's living for, but he finds a way of finding his humanity back. Now, I am currently watching the series as well, which I've got mixed feelings for, but I am liking it overall. But we are discussing that on the live stream, so make sure you join there. It is such an amazing story and, you know, they could have easily just left it there and I wish they did. <laughs> now we're going to get onto the games that I didn't mention. Now, The Last of Us Part 2 is not on here because, as you know, I hated the storyline of this game. I think they ruined the franchise. Everything else about the game was a masterpiece. The gameplay, the graphics, that's not debating how good the detail is in that game. For me, the story, the pacing, introduction to Abby Zilla, which I still hate to this day. The going back and forth to memories just didn't work for me and all these flashbacks apart from the ones that you had with Joel and Ellie those are the ones I actually cared about I think they just didn't make me care enough about Abby and what they did to certain characters which I'm not going to spoil you probably already know now I didn't mention Red Dead Redemption 2 only because I haven't played enough of that game I was like oh I want them to do a PS5 upgrade they're definitely not going to do it the loading screens are really long but I've heard Arthur Morgan is one of the best characters so I'm not just ruling this game out it should be on this list and also this might cause a bit of controversy Elden Ring is not on this list only because for me it's an amazing game it's an amazing open world it's a story that you have to research yourself you have to work and listen to the characters and npcs that you meet so for me i didn't care as much about the story i knew the overall story but i didn't really care as much for it i think everything else about it is amazing so i don't think it's a game where i could recommend it as an amazing story does that make sense does that make sense? What do you think about the games I've mentioned? I want to hear your thoughts. So drop your thoughts in the comments below and let me know. Well, let's take a look at the comment of the day from my previous video, Hoggle's Legacy on PS5. An honest review. Shout out to Stephen Chapman. Hate the fact Hogwarts Legacy has come out on PS5. Bought the game for the wife's birthday and I've not been allowed on my PS5 for weeks as she hasn't put it down. Damn, I'm sorry to hear that, man. That's a, that's quite a predicament to be in. I can tell you're probably in the very good books with your wife, so that's a positive. Hopefully you can just try and maybe buy another PS5 for another room so you can play. <laughs> or probably not. I don't have that problem. <laughs> Els hates gaming. Now it's time for another coffee. There's nothing in there, so I'm going to be right back. <laughs> What the hell are you doing? <laughs> this game is incredible! <laughs> I love it! What about the whole JK Rowling fiasco? <laughs> oh, JK, I don't even know what she said! <laughs> I'm just jumping on the bandwagon! <laughs> Come on, join me! I'm Hufflepuff! <laughs> I love the game as well! <laughs> <laughs> Are we good? Did I fuck the- oh. Fuck me, this computer feels like it's gonna fucking blow up. What remains of Edith Finch? What remains of Edith Finch? What remains of Edith Finch? I can't even say that. Honestly, I rubber Are we good? Hello? Yeah. I can't fucking see with this shit. Now, number five. Oh, my back. Didn't you just hear what I just said? <laughs> you don't fucking listen, do you? <laughs> Cry, because that's what makes me laugh. Uh -huh. Or be like, Anton, are you serious? What is wrong with you? <laughs> Even though you really do think that. <laughs>